y'all, let's bring them a Voodoo Forge. And I want to be clear, I like bayonets. I like bayonets on crags. I like bayonets made for czars. I like Great War British Hun pokers. I like classic American Nazi stabbers. I like bayonets made for Stalin. I like bayonets made for poking the Kong. I like weird Spanish bayonets. I like 1980s Cold War bayonets. Hell, I even like a bayonet on my shotgun. So when I have a bayonet lug, I want to use it. So this is a problem. It's a stupid problem, but it's a problem. Let's fix it. Well, here is what we have. Now, the, the original bayonet for the M16 series is the M7. And uh, this blade profile, I'm not going to go super into the history, but this is the, the M3 fighting knife, and then they, the, the, the carbine bayonet, the M4, and then they made an M1 grand bayonet. It was the M5 that was the same blade profile. And then they had one for the M14 that was the M6. And then this was the M7. And this was the uh, M16 bayonet for a very long time. This is, I think this is kind of cool. This is the way it, it goes on the, the, was it, 56 E2 pouch. But that's the M7 bayonet and the M8 sheath. And, um... And then, in the 80s, at some point, they decided this thing was a good idea. And it's the M9. And it's just... It's, it's ridiculous. But uh, <coughs> I got a few different uh, bayonets that we're going to modify here. Or we're going to. Uh, this is... Chinese made, but uh, it's it's stamped the UAE <laughs> United Arab Emirates, and it's got their crest on there. So I don't know if this is actually a bayonet that they use, but it's cheap and uh, it doesn't doesn't feel terrible. But uh, we're gonna be modifying that one, and then I saw this was dirt cheap. And I thought we'd be modifying this, but no, this, this is, it's terrible. <laughs> when I, when I got the, putting it back in the sheath the first time, I, I sliced the, the sheath. This is just junk. And then, uh, just so I have two, this has a handle more like the uh, original M7. This is a Smith & Wesson M7, and we're going to be modifying it. It's a lot. A lot more lightweight than the original M7. A little shorter to, well, yeah, about the same. But uh, we're gonna modify these two. That is how she looks when she's fixed to a full-size rifle. This is the problem with these little shorties. You can see there's nothing for that to, to go on. So we're gonna have to take a chunk out of the handle to move this up here. Now here's another part of the rub. If we were using a, an original M7, which I thought about doing, but these things have gotten expensive the past few years, the, the tang actually goes through this bayonet lug and then is peened over. So that's, I mean, that's very well made. That's not, that's not going anywhere. These two, uh, the Smith & Wesson one, I, th I think it may be epoxied or so. I don't know how that is attached to the handle. We're going to have to do some dissecting. And then uh, this uh, UAE bayonet, it's got a hex head. So let's get these taken apart and see what we're dealing with. We're going to start with the uh, UAE one. This is a five millimeter hex key if anybody's interested. That's pretty well made. I'm not terribly upset with that. Let's see what we got in here. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so that is just a 
the tube. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is cut that off there and then measure the right amount of this and cut it off and weld it. We'll cut this about halfway and weld it. Mm. Oh, let's see what's going on in the M&P here. This thing just feels cheap. Well, it was cheap. It was like 16 bucks. Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Yeah, that's got a little bit of a mortise and tenon joint there and it looks like it has been it's not brazed it looks like some kind of epoxy or glue maybe so we'll try heating that up and getting it off this one should be a lot more straightforward we get this end cap off we cut it and then cut the handle but first we gotta get get that off First order of business, we're gonna cut that off right about there. We're not anywhere into anything needing to be precise yet, so right there ought to do it. What I've discovered here is this uh, bushing type ring um, went all the way down over this. So we'll have to Try and drill that a little bit to make this work. Sorry, my battery died while I was drilling. Now that got a little off center, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. I have uh, reattached the latch to this piece and I'm gonna kinda mark it by. I'm gonna put a little bit of layout fluid on this to make it easy to mark. That's on there. Now, use a really specific method that I like to call eyeballing. And there's my little mark. <laughs> that is ridiculous. All right. I think we can finish welding that now. welded in good so one and five eighths we're gonna use the back of this I'll measure it and cut it here it's actually cut perfect length the trouble is, is this needs to be drilled out for that and then I'll probably have to take a Dremel and make it where it'll fit out on there what I got to do now is these flats Got to grind those in. Figure out a way to get this to get marked by those flats. But really, the best idea I can come up with is this one. So I really hope they didn't solder the brace down because. I'll be beating that up. Actually, wait a minute, this may make it seat. Looky there. Well, that is one of the best ideas I've had today. That is silly. Moment of truth. <laughs> it's the silliest thing. <laughs> now, for my dissy, I can make it a little longer 
if I want to, but I'm going to be honest, I don't see any need in it. But the trouble is the handle on the Smith & Wesson one here is quite a bit more brittle than uh, the one that was on uh, this UAE one. By the way, I looked, I looked this up. They're like 33 bucks on Amazon. I'll link it in the description of the video if I can. See, that is just chintzy. Hmm. I think that's epoxy. We'll try heating it. See what happens. Yeah, that is not moving. So, honestly, I think the best thing to do is just cut that off. Mark my blade, gonna go saw it. Now these handles I am going to make dang good and well sure that I cut them just a hair long so I can sand them to fit because I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit more of a pain in the butt. I cannot help but just laugh when I look at this thing. <laughs> oh. oh, that is the silliest thing. <laughs> oh, what a way for a grown man to spend his afternoon. So you can see the side by side comparison here. Okay, so that should take care of the problem. Anytime I need to bayonet anybody and I've got my dissipator pistol, that, that's a, I don't have to worry about that anymore. It's problem solved. Now you might not like it, but a dissipator with an A1 stock, a quad rail, a giant surefire, and a little stubby bayonet is the peak of performance. All right, so my bayonet problems are solved. Oh, crap. <laughs>